2022 November. I did like $750,000 in revenue. I probably profited around 300,000 that month. So if you're clicked on this video, you wanna know who I am before we get into that. I just wanna tell you I'm here. My assistant Jolie, we have another video on the channel. She's behind the camera uh, as well as my head of content here. We're gonna be diving into a few questions that they have prepared. And yeah, pretty much tell you guys about myself. Jolie, wanna say hello? What's up guys? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. All right, question one. Who is Jacob Levenrad? Who is Jacob Levenrad? Give us a one minute rundown of your life so far. Ah, fuck. That's a tough one. Um, I'm 21 years old. I dropped out of school at 16, but like if we go all the way back, I was born in Los Angeles. When I was two, my family, we moved all the way to Florida. I grew up in a semi-small town, close friends. I'd say like a middle to upper class life. We had food on the table, but definitely there were times where I realized like we, we weren't balling, balling. Um, and yeah, I never really thought about money until I was like 13, 14. Started little like find and flip. I did a swap meet when I was 13 where I sold iPhone cases. And yeah, when I was 16, I realized like school wasn't working out. I have videos that go more in depth on it. And I fully dropped out, started drop shipping a few years past. That started really picking up. And then at 18, I started with social media and posting about it and drop shipping started really picking up. And now I also help people do it, run an agency and and making some decent money in the process. Question number two, what are you currently working on? What am I currently working on? Right now, my biggest focus by far is, is the idea of just progression. I think it's very scary and a lot of people fall into like this circle and like whirlwind of doing the same shit over and over and over again. And for me, I just wanna make sure like I'm always progressing. Yeah, I mean, just really making sure I just move forward in all the things, the actual like three core businesses I'm running is one, my main e-commerce brand. In the past, I've run like multiple stores at once and for anyone who doesn't know, like e-commerce, drop shipping, they go hand in hand. But for me, my big thing is I wanna focus on my one drop shipping and e-commerce store and just really focus on scaling that, really branding it out and getting it to the point where I can go and hey, like offer it to be sold, sell it for a few hundred thousand, maybe even over seven figures. Um, right now it's doing pretty well and it's done over what a million three a million four at this point my agency is my second core thing just scaling that and really systemizing the ability to help people run TikTok ads at scale you know we bring in businesses who want to run paid ads and are struggling with it they don't understand how and we have a team and a whole system really an agency at place that can do it for them it will literally act as a system to get their ads filmed launched we, we handle literally everything a to z with paid ads um and yeah we've helped a lot of brands start and scale with paid ads specifically businesses that are kind of already at a higher level that's kind of why we made talk media to bring on established businesses and help them scale and the third thing is my mentorship program you know over the last two and a half ish years um in my like six years in business the last two and a half i've really been focused on the idea of like mentoring people there's a lot of guys who offer training online but my big thing is like you need to work with someone who's done what you want to do in order to see like results like them and my mentorship program i think is the perfect kind of combination of what a beginner needs to start i've kind of created this like all-in-one package to make sure people do well and yeah I'm, I'm focused on that right now we're not really letting too many people in but as i kind of progress and just make it more efficient in the learning process i plan on opening up taking on more interviews and more people into that question number three what do you think molded you to become who you are today Ooh, what do i think molded me these questions are good i like these questions what do i think molded me to become who i am today uh, I don't think I have like too many role models. I love my dad, my mom, my brother. They've definitely helped me. Uh, I think it's a conjunction of a lot of things, but if I had to pinpoint number one, I'd say it's my brother. He made a good amount of money and I saw it happen and, and he really like guided me and showed me the light with it. Uh, I mean like even you, Julie, you saw like in my early days, I've known Julie forever. And I don't know, just seeing it happen in front of you, it's just like, it's, it's crazy. And he never tried making me like the runner up to him. I think he really wanted me to do it myself. And he like saw that I was gonna do my own thing. And yeah, we kind of merged off into our own paths. And he really showed me the light I'd say and was the start of my whole real entrepreneurial ventures. And I really started my first real business at 16. Question number four, what keeps you going every day? Why do you work? What keeps me going? Um, Ooh, fuck. 
I don't know. I, I, I view I view work in an interesting way. There's a lot of people who I think are very lazy, who make a lot of money. I was even saying on a, a student call today, and I said, like, you can be really fucking dumb and make a lot of money. I think there's a lot of very unintelligent people that still become multimillionaires, if not fucking worth multi eight figures. It's really not hard to make money. Where people get confused is they think it's hard and they never pursue it. That's where people fuck up. But man, I mean, if I look at it for myself, I know the, the idea of me doing well isn't really like an if. I don't think it's a maybe. You know, I've already done some pretty, some pretty amazing things and I just want to continue doing it. It's, it's I don't really have a goal, I feel like. I don't really have a why as much as I just, I like fucking working and, and I really like the idea of just being a high performing individual day by day and accomplishing amazing things as just, it gives you power. It gives you like ammunition, you know, money's like ammo to just live a good life and make a change and help people. Um, literally right now I'm, I'm probably paying over a million dollars a year just to my team and the idea. And like, when I think about that, I'm like, fuck, like there's literally over a million dollars going to people around me that stems from ideas and things that I started. Like I was literally four or five years ago, a kid in his mom's bedroom, and now I'm fucking writing $100,000 checks every month. It's, it's nuts. And I don't know, I just, I like the idea of just being a winner. Question number five, what is your biggest regret? My biggest regret? I, I'm not a big regretful person. And I think that's the correct word there. High school dropout might have been improper grammar, but the the thing for me is like you're gonna fuck up. You're gonna make really bad mistakes. Hopefully not too bad. And I think it's just about what you learn from them. Like when you talk about failure, everyone fails. It's part of the learning process, and I'm I'm a big believer in that. That the idea of not failing and even living a life where you're afraid of failing is really bad because you're gonna not do things that could have worked, and you're just gonna live a very inefficient life like i think my biggest strength is like i don't care to fail i have the systems now where like i don't know i just i do whatever i want and whatever i think will work and i have the team that's kind of there to help guide it but we're, we're never in like a, a failure fixed mindset and i think true proper entrepreneurs have that mindset of like it it has to work you're, you're just so extremely optimistic and that's how i think of most uh decisions and, and ventures i do Question number six, is there any regret you have that isn't business related? Ooh, any regret that isn't business related? Yeah, I guess before I was talking a lot more about business stuff. Not really. I mean, thank God my, both my parents are alive and healthy. I think I had, I had both an experience with my mom and dad where they were in like sketchy-ish spots with health and it was definitely like it definitely was like a, a, a news flash where I was like, damn, like I'm just doing all this work and I see them a good amount, but they definitely have both made it clear to me that I don't see them enough and they want to see me more. And it's almost like this interesting balance of like, you have to go and see your family and be with them and spend time. But at the same time, I live this like hyper optimized life where I, I borderline don't even want to go get a haircut. You know, I, some mornings I wake up, I'm like, I don't even know if I should shower now or shower in five hours because I don't want to throw off my morning. And it comes down to like, I'm trying to learn to balance it, but both times, and I don't really want to get into what happened, but both times when our mom and dad had the like sketchy-ish moments in their life, I, it gave me like a big slap in the face and like, yo, it could just end. And my dad even told me that and made it clear. He like, he literally told me when he was younger, he had that similar experience with his dad where he wasn't really seeing him a lot. And then he realized when he was like 40, 45, like damn, like, he's getting old and it's it's definitely like the interesting part of life you know even with yourself there's a, a latin phrase called memento mori which says live your life knowing you're going to die which sounds pretty like messed up but at the same time it's, it's true we all like live day to day especially like some people they're so i almost think lackluster is the word like it's like they have, they have no like oomph and meaning and and when you realize death is apparent for not only you, but every single person you see, I think it's a big eye opener and it, it can uh, help guide you in a lot of ways. So I think it's important to keep in mind. How do you cope with failure and setbacks in your life and what lessons have you learned from them? Uh, I mean, I talked, I think failures, failures are all relative and 
when you realize every failure is just like a step in your a step in your journey, uh, you realize like in reality the failure was a lo lesson. It's just how expensive was it? I definitely had some expensive failures. Like the biggest one I could think of is PayPal. My first store I had PayPal and they held like I think forty six thousand dollars for me at seventeen. Didn't feel good. I don't even think I had forty six thousand dollars. Think literally they were holding more money than I had in my bank account because I still had to fund the store, run the ads, ship the product, do the customer support, but they were just holding gross revenue. And yeah, I, I literally never got it. They, I, I vividly remember they sent me an email saying, since the product had, it was pretty much a, a trademark issue, which they fully made up. But, you know, Shopify had no issue with it. No one had an issue with it but PayPal. But since the product like was a gray area, of like not fully being mine, they were gonna charge me a $1,500 fine for each one I sold. And then I was getting the good end of the stick because they're not gonna go and pursue me for the other like $200,000. They like literally borderline made up a number. Uh, and yeah, it sucked. They literally paid themselves from my PayPal balance into like PayPal. And there was nothing I could do. If, if you're watching this and you're at a high level scaling with PayPal, I highly recommend you look into how malicious they can be. And I really do hope that someone does sue them. I know some people have tried, but it's it's not optimal. But other than that, I mean, yeah, I think failures are just learning lessons. Question number eight, what does happiness mean to you and how do you actively pursue it in your life? What does happiness mean for me? When I, when I moved to my first apartment, my mom, she's like, what can I get you? And I was literally, as she said it, I was buying a canvas. That canvas, no one can see it, but it's, it's a canvas that's money doesn't buy happiness. And I literally was telling her while I'm buying this, I was like, I think it's a $250 canvas, I'm buying this canvas, you know, you want to buy this for me? <laughs> and she's like, sure. They send her the link, she gets it for me. Um, I've always been pretty, I don't know, I've never been a big gift guy. I don't like receiving gifts. I don't really like giving gifts too either. And it just worked well. I feel like they've always just asked me and I like, tell them one thing I was going to buy and they buy me it. And yes, yeah, so she bought me this canvas. And I remember when I got it, I, I kind of didn't, didn't really think about it when I bought it. Then having it in my apartment, I've lived alone now like what, three and a half, four years. I, I'd think about it. And then in TikToks or lives or YouTube, I, I'd talk about it here and next people would bring it up. And when I think about happiness and overall, even like if money is a relative factor there, I think that they are very different, but in a lot of the times they cross paths because you realize that as humans, our intrinsic uh, value, what we crave is we crave pleasure. We crave purpose and I think a lot of the time you'll realize like purpose is the ultimate pleasure and you know that's that's what we want as humans and in like our, our deep down like animal instinct that's like what we're thinking subconsciously but then you bring it into real life and you realize like what is you know pleasure what is purpose and you realize money is a big part of both because if you have purpose in life it's probably in pursuit of making money because money allows you to in most cases kind of get maximum pleasure so you can go in one of the like I think greatest like aspects of pleasure in life is having like a, a family I think for humans it's like one of those like just happiest moments having a good family a good wife or if you're you know a girl a husband and in my eyes money and the pursuit of money will be a part of that I think there is a world where you look at these extremely extremely wealthy individuals it's like playing a video game like their whole pursuit to the point that they're at they enjoyed it enjoyed it but once you get to that top it almost becomes like you, be, you beat the game and I think it's a pretty deep point that's why I think a lot of like really big billionaires say money doesn't buy happiness well it's because they already beat the game but you look at someone like me who's like still playing the game and I definitely think like this pursuit of money it's fun I enjoy it I'm a, I'm a very happy person um, but yeah I think the bigger picture is it's, it's past money they just kind of overlap a bit um, it's, it's purpose and, and pleasure Question number nine. Working for you, I see it firsthand that you work and pursue things so intensively. Legit working consistent 12 hour days. How and why do you work like this? Time um, out. Answer along lines of peak efficiency and optimization, almost stressed to do well and get shit done quicker than anyone. Side note. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's honestly hard for me to answer. I don't even really know I almost have like a, a like a deep down stress to get shit done. And I feel like here you've seen fucking, you've been here, you're literally leading our whole content team. And just every day I have this like innate fucking thing inside of me that just wants to 
work. I, I don't even care to make money. It's more of just like, if I don't get done what I need to get done and get closer to my goal, it like hurts me. And it, it's like, a, it's almost one of my biggest fears, I feel like, of not getting stuff done. And even past that, I have these longer term goals in which like, I almost feel I'm not doing enough daily in order to get to them quickly. Cause I look at it as like, look, when you're, when you're starting off as an entrepreneur, you're trying to make 10K, 50K a month, it's not hard. Say so everyone and their mom can make 10 or 50K a month. It's not hard at all. Because you're, you're, who are you playing against? You're playing against normal people who have normal jobs. They don't understand the, the world of doing well. But once you pass the 100K, the 200K, like you wanna push like half a mil, a million a month, you realize like you're, you're playing a different game. Instead of going and being in, in high school where you're playing fucking high school ball and everyone on the court is sucks, like you're, you're the top player. Once you go to college, like everyone is that top person from their high school. And now you're playing with a bunch of guys who are on your level. And that's the thing for me is I realized the way to really get ahead is outworking everyone. If you can outwork everyone and be more efficient and all these little like 1% increases, you just become like this superhuman. And that's, that's what really winning is to me. And I, I can't fully explain it yet. I don't think I'm mature enough to understand it, but I think I mentally have it down at least to get stuff done pretty well now. And I'm just very in pursuit of winning and getting to my goals. I want to get there quick. And I haven't even really plotted out my long, long-term vision, but even just my three and six month goals, like I, I just want to get there so quickly and just beat everyone. Just, it's the art of the game and I, I fucking love the game. Question number 10, last question. You work hard and for a 21 year old are doing extremely well, but from your eyes, do you feel like you've made it in life? Um, I talked about this in another YouTube video on my channel. And uh, I, I went over how like on average, at least right now it's 2023, May, it's May of 2023. Over the last 12 months, averaged out to making around $250,000 a month. Kept factor in the low months, high months. And you realize like, okay, my biggest month of all, of my life actually, not just over the last 12 months, was 2022 November. I did like $750,000 in revenue. I probably profited around 300,000 that month between my three core businesses I mentioned earlier. And like, I almost did it. I feel like at 21 and I, I didn't feel this then, I don't feel this now, which is weird, but I feel like that's like fucked, making 300K in a month. It's like, I, I don't know, I can't even describe it. It's almost like I'm trying to be someone else if I try to emphasize that being good. The best way I can explain why I don't feel like that that's good and I don't feel like what I want to do is even that big. I almost feel like it's it's not hard what I'm doing. I thank God for that. I'm just just doing my thing. I feel like it's just working. Um, I'm working at an efficient pace. It's because you realize like there's only bigger fish and there's only bigger things to do. And again, like I'm, I'm in the game. Like I'm in the journey. I, I fuck with this, like this life, this, the way I live, the way I work. It's just fun. And I definitely do think I need to stop and smell the roses more. A lot of people have said that to me, my mom included, shout out mom. But the best way I can explain why I'm not satisfied is I know how, how far I can go. And I know the position that I'm in. And other than that, I mean, for me, I'm just, I love this journey. I think I'm very blessed for what I've been able to figure out at such a young age. And I just want to keep on taking it. I just, I, I really do see the light. And I think seeing the light is almost understanding you never truly see the light. And I think that's a really deep line. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching, Jolie. Thanks for saying all the questions. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> and yeah, guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. I'll comment down below any support, love, and make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you in the next one. See Peace. ya.